squared is equal to 41 over 4. And now we're going to solve it. X minus 5 halves is equal to the square root of 41 over 2. The square root of 41, well, the square root of 36 is 6. The square root of 49 is 7. 6.5 is in the middle. So 36 to 49 is what, 13? Half of 13 is 6 and a half, so that'd be 42 and a half. So I say 41 is probably 6.4. X minus 5 halves is equal to positive or negative 6.4 over 2. Somebody check, what's the square root of 41? 6.40. Okay, so X is equal to positive or negative 6.4 plus 5 over 2. What's 6.4 plus 5? 11.4, Hubert. That's right, class. And what's half of $11.40? That's right. Appreciate the interaction. Negative six dollars and forty cent plus five dollars is what? Negative one forty, and what's half of a dollar and forty cent? Seventy cent, Hubert. That's right. <laughs> All right, plot it. I need a pocketbook like that. I know a pocketbook. Go with my ear gauge. It actually might supposed to be a pocketbook. I don't know. It's like a clutch. Ms. Brown, do you talk a lot at home? Just not in class. Oh well. Let me guess, you had mine? What's the y intercept? Negative four. What is the vertex? Two point five comma negative ten point five. And the x intercepts? is your range. Decrease or line of symmetry. X is equal to what you said that was? Um, the X. Two and a half. So what is that? Five, five halves? And decreasing from negative infinity to five halves and increasing from five halves to positive infinity. 
He made it. Probably went by the liquor store too, didn't he? No, they're not open yet. <clears throat> so he can write it down. Okay, just copy it. Meanwhile, I'll put another one on the board. And this time, this is these the last two we did was about a number four. So we're going to bump it up to a number five. You ready? Negative x squared plus 4x minus h is equal to 0. Now what's special about this one? There's a negative out front, Hubert. That's right, class. Thank you for the interaction. What do you do first? Move C. You always move C first. Did they give you mayonnaise? They did. You kid. Wow, they did. Usually they don't give you mayonnaise even if you ask for it. So you told me to get it, didn't you? I know, but usually they don't give it to you. I mean, you go to Zaxby's, you ask for honey mustard, and what do you get? Ranch. I want extra honey mustards. Get two ranches. My ranch, backwards. honey mustard. Ranch, one syllable, honey mustard, four syllables. Yeah, they're real similar. Negative x squared plus 4x minus, I'm sorry, plus blank is equal to 8 plus 1. Now, we're going to write a little note out here in red. A has to be positive and 1 in order to Complete the square. Okay? In order for you to complete the square, A has to be positive and it has to be 1. Now, right now it's negative 1. A is in front of the x squared. So, right now, you've got negative 1 right here. So, you cannot complete the square. You're going to have to factor it out. And there's another rule that you need to remember about factoring. So I'm going to put number one right here. And the second rule, whatever you factor out, you multiply by right side blank. Whatever you factor out, you multiply by the right side blank. So what am I going to factor out of the left side? What am I going to factor out? Negative one. I'm going to factor out a negative one. I'm going to do that in the red. 
I'm going to pull that negative 1 out right here. And that's going to leave me with x squared minus what? 4x plus blank is equal to 8 plus negative 1 times blank. Yeah, but what is blank? Zero. What's the difference between plus zero and negative zero? Okay, so you don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to take my handy dandy highlighter and I'm going to highlight that, highlight that, and highlight that so you will highlight it in your notes. And now take my blue hot blue pen and now what do we have in front of that X? Positive, Positive one. one. Now we can use complete the square. So I'm going to take my blue highlighter or blue pen and I'm going to say four divided by two squared. What's four divided by two? Two squared is four. And now I do just like I've been doing. So finish it out. What does that give us on the left-hand side? We still got that negative one, but what's this? Shortcut number two, number two x minus two, quantity squared is equal to eight minus four is four. say zero minus four because you're not subtracting on one side and adding on the other. You're adding four on both sides. So zero plus four is four and zero plus four is four on both sides. This program is so fast accurate. Copy. Why is that? Well, I was supposed to leave at 10.30, but then you 
That's all right. <laughs> we just talked about you after you left. That's fine. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, at this point, you could write f of x is equal to negative 1 times x minus 2, quantity squared, minus 4. And your vertex is 2, comma, negative 4. Or you could just negative 1, x minus 2, quantity squared is equal to 4. Take the opposite of this, take the opposite of this, and that's your vertex. Negative 1, x minus 2 equals 4. Divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1, x minus 2 quantity squared is equal to negative 4. Bang! Got a problem. What's the problem? Anybody want to take a stab at it? What's the problem? That's just about messed up. Why is this the problem? And you can't have that. But the biggest thing that you need to realize is when you get a negative right here, this means not only are you going to have a messed up function, but it means no x intercepts. Coach, you can't have negative on the product. But some teachers want you to keep going by using I. So we're going to do that. X minus 2 quantity squared is equal to negative 4. Take the square root of both sides. X minus 2 is equal to 2I. And you should know about I. The square root of negative 1 is equal to I. So I just wrote that as square root of negative 1, square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of negative 1 is i. And x is equal to 2 plus 2i. Two Actually, it's 2 plus or minus 2i. So. Do these two mean the same thing? Yes. If you see i, that means no x-intercept. If you have a negative over there on the right-hand side, after you, uh, when you're fixing to take the square root, then no x-intercepts. These two, they all mean the same thing. Negative in the radical or an I means no x-intercepts. So if you don't have any x-intercepts, what's the only thing that you've got to plot this one? The, the y-intercept and the what? The vertex. So what is the y-intercept? Negative what? And the vertex? 2, negative 4. And which way is it opening? How do you know that? Because this right here, well, one more. This right here means that your 
parabola is opening which way? Down. And that's why this tells you this that might happen. This might happen. I didn't say it will. It might happen. And then the eyes in the negative tell you this. What is domain? All real numbers. Range, negative infinity to what was that? Y? Negative what? Eight. Negative A. And then increasing from negative infinity to two and then decreasing from two to infinity. Line of symmetry x is equal to two. Negative x squared minus 7x minus 10 is equal to 0. Take off.
finished yet. Y'all don't give up. Which one is it? Working. You're working. You're ciphering. C. Negative x squared minus 7x plus blank. I'll move the 10 for you. There you go. Maybe that'll help you out. Now, what are you going to factor out? Negative one. We'll give you x squared plus seven x plus blank is equal to ten plus negative times blank. Put a negative one there if you want to. What's half of seven? Seven halves. Seven halves squared is forty nine what? Forty nine fourths. Now, do you see why people use completing the square? How hard is squaring 79 halves? I'm sorry, 79 halves. How hard is squaring 7 halves? I mean, honestly, 7 squared is 49, 2 squared is 4. What do you rely on for completing the square? Basic math. Negative 1, x plus 7 halves, quantity squared, is equal to, well, negative 49 fourths, so this is going to change into 40 fourths, minus 49 fourths, negative 9 what? Negative 9 fourths. Do we have x-intercepts? Yes or no? 50-50? Yes. yes, we do. Yes. Well, Hubert, I thought you said, wait a minute, what did I say? I said, if you have a negative over on the right-hand side before you take the square root, what are you going to have before you take the square root? You're going to have a positive 9 force. you got to be careful. Now, what happened when I did that on the last problem? It just... No pattern. No structure. Hmm. trying to get an Epson person to come and give us a class. So hopefully by the beginning of the next semester we'll have a class on it. Oh, thank you for moving. Thank you for highlighting that now. Alright. So F of X is equal to negative 1 x plus 7 halves quantity squared plus 9 fourths and negative 7 halves and 9 fourths is your vertex or you could just write negative 7 halves and positive 9 fourths as your vertex negative 1 times x plus 7 halves 
quantity squared is equal to negative 9 fourths. Divide by negative 1. You get x plus 7 halves. Quantity squared is equal to what? 9 fourths. Now you're going to have x intercepts. You got to be careful. X plus 7 halves is equal to positive or negative 3 halves minus 7 halves. What's 3 minus 7? Negative 4, Hubert. That's right. Negative 4 over 2 is? Negative 2, Hubert. Thank you, class. What's negative 3 minus 7? Negative 10. Thank you. And what's negative 10 divided by 2? It's a miracle. Let's see if everything lines up. 